Today, you are going to learn how to 10X your investments, whether that investment be time, money, energy, whatever it is, you are going to learn how to get the most out of what you're putting in, in anything in your life. Hello, how are you doing today? So before we jump into today's episode, I want you to know that tomorrow is the last day to sign up for the January class of Timepiece for Lawyers. If you're listening to this in real time, it is December 12th, a Thursday. December 13th is a Friday. And that is the last opportunity that you have to sign up for Timepiece for Lawyers in January. Now, you're going to get immediate access to everything right now, but our coaching calls, the real meat of the work that we're going to do starts in January because I want you to enjoy your holiday. I want you to have some time to yourself. And at your leisure, jump into the program if you want to. But in January, we are going to get ourselves some time back. And this is really important because if you have big goals, if you are desiring something new next year, you know, this is that, you know, typical time of year, people really start thinking about that. You need time. You need space to allow the abundance, the goal to be created, to generate the energy to do the things that you want to do and to create the results that you want to create. So having more time in your pocket is what is going to give you that space. And that's what we do in Timepiece for Lawyers. So there are some already amazing lawyers already inside of Timepiece who have joined, and they are from the U.S., Canada. Last round, we had someone from the Bahamas. So we get this really beautiful, diverse group of people who come together to not only learn how to manage their time, but learn how to really take control of their law practices and their life and intentionally design their life the way they want. I'm thinking of one lawyer in particular who really decided that this was the time that they were going to take charge of their life. And now that they have this skill in their back pocket, the skill of making more time, the skill of getting organized and following through, now that they have that skill, they can grow their law practice. And achieve those goals. So if you do have goals, you want to be inside of timepiece. It's a no-brainer investment. And when I look at my investments, I'm always looking at what is what am I going to get back from them? What am I putting in, but what am I going to get back? And when you get your time back, you get back everything that you've been putting off since you've been a lawyer. And the fact that we have these beautiful lawyers inside, and this we're going to talk about this in this episode today, around the wisdom that you already have and you may not be accessing yet, and I'm going to show you how to do that. So because structure equals freedom, I'm going to give you the structure you need in timepiece for lawyers. We're going to have 12 weeks together in this container where you're going to get the coaching that you need, and you're going to get an additional month just with the materials. So as soon as you join, you're going to get you know weeks with the materials, and then even after our coaching sessions are done, you're going to have additional time to be with the materials. One of the things that I do with any investment is I am going to go over the materials again. And that might mean I join the program again. That might mean that I, you know, am am doing things that are helping me remember. And then I can go back, you know, writing down notes and then going back and reviewing my notes. But those are some things that I do. We're going to talk more in depth about that here today in the podcast. But we're closing this on December 13th. So if you're not in there, you got to get in there. I I mean, I've been talking about it on this podcast for weeks. So come on. I know this is the time. Now is the time that so many of us feel frazzled because there's holiday parties. There's so much going on. But it doesn't take that long to sign up. You just click a couple buttons and you're in. And then you get everything you need and then you get the practical tools that you need and the coaching that you need starting in January to get you where you want 
to go. So you don't even need to think about it during the holidays if you don't want to. But you're going to want to because it is so easy to step into the program and you have everything scheduled. And we're going to talk about how I approach these kinds of things in this episode too. So if you're wondering, you know, how am I going to make this work? I'm going to show you exactly how I do it. Because you and I share something in common. We both have human brains and my brain works the same as your brain does. I just have different skills that I've developed over time and investing in myself and investing in my brain that allow me to move through those things faster, the things that get in my way faster so I can get better results over time. And then one of the things that I want to share with you now, because it's so easy for lawyers, right? We got, we get so much to do. We've got client requests. We've got, you know, employees asking us things. We've got, you know, the cases that are maybe the old cases that we keep telling ourselves that we're going to get to, that we never get to. (laughs) We have all of these things on our plate. And so then our brain starts to ruminate. It starts to worry, how am I going to get it all done? I don't have time. It feel it creates a feeling of overwhelm. So what I want to share with you is that inside of Timepiece, there's no such thing as behind because you're going to get replays. You're going to get extra calls with support when you need them. You are going to get everything that you need inside of Timepiece to make things happen for yourself. And I am there every step of the way because I am obsessed with seeing you get results. Now, I can't eat for you. I can't do the work for you, right? But when you get these this simple, organized, structured way of doing things, you are going to notice a tremendous difference in your way of being, and you are going to see shifts. So I want to encourage you to sign up for Timepiece for Lawyers right now. Go to dinacataldo.com forward slash timepiece. That's P-E-A-C-E dinacataldo.com forward slash timepiece and start making those changes today. We're going to get the ball rolling now because you're going to get access to all the bonuses, all that good stuff. And I give you all the details at dinacataldo.com forward slash timepiece. And January 7th is the day that you and I start to get to work and you don't have to have any foundation because I'm there to give you that foundation. All right. So with that, in mind, let's talk about how to 10x your investments in time and energy because it's so important that we do this for ourselves. That when we invest in something, whether it's how we are giving our time maybe to an employee or into a coaching program like Timepiece for Lawyers or to anyone in our lives, right? To ourselves, that we know what the return on investment is. And if we don't, then we need to pause and take a look and really break it down. So there's no better investment than investing in your brain is how I think about things. Because I know that once I have given myself that investment, I know that I'm going to have that skill for life. I'm going to have the ability to make money for life. I'm going to have the ability to manage my time for life. I'm going to have the ability to create systems for life. It's not something anyone can take away from me. It's in me. Just like when you went to law school, you got the skill of thinking like a lawyer. No one can take that away from you. Right. That's why it's so important that when we put that investment into ourselves, that we understand, oh, yeah, this isn't just something that's going to last a few weeks. It's something that's going to last a lifetime. And what's the return on investment over a lifetime? When you think about the time that you put into an employee and the trainings that you give them, you're thinking about, oh, okay, well, if I'm putting this amount of investment in them, I want to see this investment come back to me. I want to see a return on that investment. And so you're actually thinking about that before you even hire them, or at least you should be. I train you how to think about this inside of Timepiece, actually. But you, if you're not thinking about those things, then you are not necessarily getting the return on investment that you want to receive. And one of the things that I hear so often often when it comes to, you know, joining a program, joining coaching, you know, learning a new skill is that there's this fear 
that they're not going to do the work. Like they're going to, you know, sign up for something and then they're not going to show up. They're not going to, you know, do the things. And what that really is, if you're thinking that, like if that comes to mind for you, what that really is, is some old judgment of something that happened in the past that just keeps repeating in your mind. Right, because when we focus on something over and over, how in this example, like how we we didn't do the work and we didn't get the result, then we're really blocking ourselves from creating any change. And it it might sound like a simple thing to get, but most of us don't create and take take those steps forward to really get that we've got to completely forgive ourselves for whatever has happened in the past and say, today is a new day and I'm stepping forward. And I want to share with you what I've learned over the years that not only removed that fear, because I had the same fear, right? When I first started, I had the same fear, like, okay, I'm going to sign up for this thing. Am I really going to do the work? But What happened was, is that because I took action, I decided to keep going forward, even though I had this story about the past and how I didn't follow through on things in the past. But because I decided to just say, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to step forward. I started to break the belief that it wasn't possible for me to change, to do something different. And when we start getting that skill of taking action, and in this case, I'm talking about the action of just joining it, just doing it and doing, saying, no, I'm not going to believe that old story anymore. I'm just going to do it. And a lot of times, well, I want to say almost all the time now, it's like, okay, my brain wants to overthink things. And so I have to go in and say, nope, we're not overthinking this. We're jumping in and I know this is what I want. I know that I want more of this in my life, whatever that investment is, whether it's time, whether it's learning a new business skill, whether it's whatever it is. I know I want this. Let's go. And I am willing myself to take a new action. And because I do that, I started to break down that old fear and start to take action consistently. And I started putting myself into rooms of people that were doing the same things. And when I saw that, I felt inspired and I saw possibility and I thought, okay, I can do this. I can do this. And the more I reminded myself that I could do this, I started doing it. And that is where I started. And now I want to share with you what I have observed over years of working on myself, over years of building a business on top of the legal practice on, you know, on top of caring for, you know, family members, I have done these things. And I did that because I did nine things consistently and I did them over and over and over again. And then when I started to do them, I started getting 10x the results in my investments. And so that's what I want to share with you here today. So let's start, shall we? All right. So number one, when I invest in anything, coaching programs, uh, my my virtual assistant, um, my business, when I invest in these things, I know the the thing that I want to get, the result I want to get, the skill I want to acquire. I have to know that because if I'm just investing to invest, then I am not thinking through why I'm doing it. And then I'm just spending money, right? It's not investing. It's just like, oh, okay, I'm just going to spend this money. But what I also know is that my body is going to lie to me and it's not a really great indicator of whether or not I should invest in something. (laughs) So my body gets really nervous when I think about spending money on an in- investment. So I've invested anywhere from, you know, $1,000 to $25,000 on different things that I needed to get the result that I wanted. Or even more than that, when you think about law school, I think it was like $36,000 a year when I went. So if you really think about the result that you want, you want to think about, all right, I... I'm going to invest 
$25,000, what am I going to get for that $25,000, right? What am I going to get for that $36,000? I'm going to get a skill that I'm going to use over and over and over again in my lifetime in order to achieve the result that I want. I am going to ensure that I get that result, which is the whole point of this podcast, because if you're going to invest in anything, you want to be able to achieve the result. So I'm showing you how I have done it in the past and how I still do it. But my body reacts physiologically. So I can feel that tension in my center, in my heart. I feel it coming up into my throat. And it's almost like I want to barf. <laughs> so I need to whenever I'm making a decision, calm my nervous system. I need to take some breaths and say, okay, what is it that I want? Well, I want this skill of time management. I want this skill of mindset to grow my business so that I can do it more simply. I want the skill of creating a system. Is that worth it to me? And I will sit and I will pause and I'll say, yeah, is this amount worth it to me? Yeah, heck yeah right? It's like, heck yeah, I'll pay X amount of dollars if I know I'm going to get that result and I am going to implement it, right? I know that if I sit, if I am really committed to this result, I'm going to get it. And this whole podcast is about creating that commitment. So if you related to what I talked about earlier, stay with me here because this is going to give you the fuel that you need to keep moving forward. So once I sign up for something and I say, okay, yeah, this is the thing I want. I jump in. I put the important dates on my calendar. I, you know, say, okay, we got, we got the dates on the calendar. Nothing's getting in my way of showing up. I'll move some things around. I just joined, you know, I joined a coaching program not that long ago where I did just that. I just, okay, well, I'm going to move things around because this is important to me. So I make that result important to me. And I know it's important to me when I sign up. And then I make it happen. I start to move mountains because I want that result. I will it to happen. But it's because I have decided that that is the result that I want. And I take it for myself. I don't wait and sit back for it to happen. I take it for myself. And that's something that so often we don't think about in terms of our abilities to take it for ourselves. But I want you to really imagine the result that you want and going out and making it happen, but pulling it, allowing it to come to you because you are taking the action you need to make it happen. You're just like, okay, it's happening. I'm making it happen because I'm making space for it in my life. I'm moving things around because this is important to me. And that's how I treat my programs. Any program that I join, any coaching that I join, I make it happen. I move things. I don't let my brain come up with excuses why I can't do something because I know I take things for myself when I need them and want them. The second thing that I do is that I jump into the materials knowing that I'm not going to be able to absorb everything all at once. And I will need to hear everything multiple times and I'll need to put it into practice over and over and over again. So I am not beating myself up that I don't know it by now. Because any new skill that we want to acquire for ourselves takes practice. And I was used to, in school, easily getting good grades. It was very easy to assimilate information and then spit it out in an exam. Well, learning a skill that's repeatable is not the same as what we were taught to do in school. So if you want to acquire a new skill, you have to know you are not going to know all the nuances. You are not going to get it all at once. And you're certainly not going to be able to implement it the very first time, maybe the second time or the third time or the 20th time. But what is happening when you are implementing is you are beginning to embody the different practices. So it's layering the skills, right? So if you hear something once, yeah, maybe you get it superficially. You hear something twice, you get a little new nuance. The third time you get another nuance. The fourth time you get another nuance and so on. 
Because when we're learning something new, we can't assimilate it all. That's not how our brain works. And when we start to learn something, learning a new skill, we start to become a new person. So the next time we hear something, we get something else from it because we've become a new person with new information in our head that can now assimilate new ideas. So I go into any program knowing that I'm not going to just know it all by you know, scooping up, watching all of the programs all at once, like watching all the trainings all at once. I'm not going to get it all at once. I'm going to have a lot of information, but I haven't put it into practice. And I haven't heard the nuance because this is only my first run through. So that's why, you know, there's certain programs like Timepiece is one of them. Like I suggest you go through it multiple times because you're going to go through it once and you're going to see results. But when you go through it another time and another time and another time, you're going to see even more results and things are going to get even better and better and better. And you're going to create more freedom for yourself because you are assimilating the information in a different way. You're applying it in a different way. The third thing that I do is I ask for help and I will get, you know, I'll get on a call and I won't want to speak up. I won't want to say anything because my nervous system, right, is telling me that my subconscious brain is fearful of what people are going to think, that I'm going to say something wrong, that I'm going to sound stupid, that, you know, the coach is going to think that I'm, you know, brain dead, you know, all the things, right? That the words aren't going to come out right. My subconscious brain thinks those things. And so I know when I come to a coaching call and I start to feel this like urge to say something, but I am holding myself back because I feel this, um, this, tension in my, 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 it's either usually in my chest. Sometimes it's in my stomach, but usually it's in my chest and I'm afraid to raise my hand, right? Cause I'm in a, in a group coaching environment. I know in that moment I need to raise my hand and I need to override the nervous system response and instead just raise my hand and say, Hey, I, I'm not exactly sure how this is going to sound, but I'm going to say it because I know I need something right now. And that way I ensure I am getting the result that I want. But that's only because I am familiar with how my body feels and I don't let my body tell me what to do, right? My body is going to feel tension. It's going to say, no, no, don't raise your hand because you're going to die because that's the ultimate fear, right? Like you're going to be rejected from the group and then you're going to be fending for yourself and you're going to be out on your own and you're going to die. That's just how our nervous system and our subconscious work. So because I know that, I can raise my hand and ask for help. And because we're human, our bodies are going to work similarly, right? If I'm feeling this, you might feel it too. That's okay. What you need to know is when you are joining any program and you want to get what you want, if you're investing in anything, you want to ask for help, whether it's coaching, whether it's, you know, you, you, you know, hired a financial advisor and you're starting to feel this gut reaction. You're like, I don't really know what to say. I don't want to sound stupid. It's emailing them. It's calling them. It's saying, Hey, I need some help. I don't quite understand this. And when you do, you get the result that you invested in. So I want to encourage you to do that in any investment that you do. Number four, I commit ahead of time to try what my coach offers me over and over again until I understand it. And not just know it, right? Like not not just kind of like, oh yeah, that makes sense. It's really, truly, deeply understand it. Because my body and my subconscious are going to want to rebel against pretty much everything. And so I have to continually remind myself like, oh, I signed up for this for a reason. Like I know the result that I want to get. And so part of that is to really listen to what my coach is saying, listen to what my advisor's saying, listen to, you know, whatever that investment, whoever's involved with it, what they're saying, and then apply it over and over again until I get it, until I really understand it. Because you can't know whether or not you agree with something until you truly understand it. And when you apply it, it's totally different than just hearing it. And it goes in one ear and then your brain says, yeah, that's a bunch of baloney. 
And then you never apply it because your brain just dismissed it. So I'm constantly working to notice when my brain does that and say, uh, uh, nope, nope, nope. You signed up for this for a reason. You wanted this result. Listen to what they have to say. Apply it over and over and over again until you understand it. I want. I also liken this to artists. And I, when I think of artists who have done this, let's say Picasso, he didn't go into cubism which if you're not familiar with art, it's not traditional um, structured way of looking at the world. You know, it's not realism. It is this abstract expression of what someone might see in the world. He started by learning the basics. He got the foundation. He went to his teachers. He invested in himself so that he could learn, how do I make a flower look realistic, right? How do I create a natural scene in the world with people walking in a neighborhood, for instance? And then what he did is he said, okay, I understand this concept. Now I feel called for something else. I need some more, some more ability to express myself in a different way. But because he understood and could create those realistic environments using his techniques that he learned, he then had the, the ability to break those rules and then create something totally new and different. And so that's really how I look at it, whether it's time management or business concepts, whatever it is, is I want to understand those concepts amazingly from the perspective of whomever I'm learning them from. And then I break the rules because then I understand, oh yeah, this is, this is the point they were trying to get across, but that's not for me. And I'm going to do it in this way, but that comes after it could be years of me doing it one way so that I could then apply it differently. Or maybe it could be six months, but it is going to be something that I do is I really look at and evaluate what I'm learning apply it over and over and over again until I understand the concepts and then I can make it my own. Fifth, I evaluate every attempt, whether it is a business launch, whether it is um, marketing, whether it is um, time management, whatever it is, I evaluate every attempt that I make. So I give you a process for this inside of Timepiece for Lawyers specific to managing your time. But I want you to know that you can do this in any area, but it requires that you know the result that you want. And it requires that you look at those results that you're receiving without judgment of yourself, without judgment of whoever you're learning from. Um, you've got to look at it very objectively. Six, I don't indulge in self-pity. So I might have self-pity from time to time. Don't think that I don't do that, but I get out of it quickly because I notice it. And a lot of times when we feel self-pity, I'm going to give you a couple examples. We don't even notice it. We just think that it's reality, that reality is being reflected to us versus saying, oh, wait, I actually am in charge of my reality and creating my reality. So this is what self-pity looks like. For example, I'll take it to time management. You create a calendar and then at the end of the day, you look at your calendar and you notice that you didn't get everything done on your calendar that day, right? So you can look at that calendar and have multiple different responses, but the self-pity response is this. Well, I didn't get everything done on my calendar today. So that means I can't do it. It's hopeless. Um, this is just like, all those other times I tried before, those kinds of thoughts, you feel so much self-pity for yourself. You feel totally hopeless. And then that takes you down this path of stopping altogether. And then you're drowning in work without any progress because you just stop. That's, that's indulging in self-pity. And what it can look like and what I have created because I used to I used to indulge in self-pity for sure. But what I have done is learned that, oh, wait a minute, I have more power than I think. I actually do have control over my reality. So now if I look at my calendar and I didn't get everything done that day, I say, oh, that, that stinks. But like, let's take a look at why it happened that way. Like, let's really evaluate that. And then 
for a moment, I feel disappointment because I'm saying, oh, that stinks. Like I didn't get everything done that I wanted. Right. So I'm honoring myself. I'm not like trying to whitewash, you know, what happened that day or how I feel. But then I'm like, OK, I'm a little more empowered because then I say, oh, well, let's take a look at what happened. Like what, what happened today, sweetie? You know, t- say what's what's going on? What happened today? And then when I'm not in the self-pity, I have more control. And that allows me to evaluate. It allows me to make changes if I need to in my calendar. It allows me to see, oh, wait a minute. Actually, I got all the most important things done. And that other thing that I put on my calendar wasn't all that important, which is why I didn't do it. So those are the kinds of things that you have the access to when you get out of self-pity faster. And it's a practice. And you can do it when you do this over and over again. Seventh, I surround myself with people who want the same thing. So there's a different energy with people who want the same thing. They're more focused on the thing that you want. And you learn more from the people around you because they're all going through similar experiences. They might be going through similar struggles, even if they're not exactly like yours, and you can apply it. And that's a, I'm going to give you this bonus one. Whatever anybody says, this is how I also 10X my investment. Whatever anybody says, I know my brain is going to say, oh, that doesn't apply to me. And I say, nope, it does. How does it apply to me? That is a question I will offer to you is that anytime you're listening to anything, whether it's this podcast, whether it's some other podcast, a training, somebody talking, like an opposing counsel, ask yourself, how does this apply to me? And you're going to start seeing ways to incorporate what you're learning, even though at first it didn't seem relevant at all. So that's something that I do whenever I'm in these containers where I'm I'm listening to somebody and I'm learning from somebody. Even if my brain says it doesn't matter, I know it does. And so in Timepiece, for instance, we've got a container of people who are absolutely amazing and they have so much knowledge and they all have things going on in their life, even if they're not exactly like yours, that you're going to learn from. So even if you don't speak up in a coaching call, if you don't, you don't want coaching that day, you're going to learn something from the call because you're going to get this experience that you're observing from somebody else's perspective and you can incorporate that in your life. Number eight, relentless pursuit of what I want and complete responsibility over my results. So if I don't get the result I want immediately, and I talked about this a little bit earlier, I know it's not because of the program. I know that I'm learning something new. I'm learning different aspects of something. And I'm not going to learn everything at once. Just like, you know, if you think back to university, you know, I, I took English lit. I was English lit and history majors. And I loved both of them. But do I remember the nuances of, you know, what is it, Beowulf or, you know, whatever history class that I took? No, I don't remember that nuance. Why? Because I took the class once. I learned enough to regurgitate it into an exam format. And then I moved on to the next class. That's not how we want to apply new skills, right? That's not how we want to approach these new skills. So instead of doing that, I just remind myself, look, I'm not going to know all of this at once and I keep going. I just, a relentless pursuit. And how am I going to, I evaluate it. How am I going to approach it differently next time? What do I want to do next time? And then I get the result that I want. Number nine, there's no hierarchy in a group. I always remind myself this. There's no hierarchy in a group. There's nobody who like has all the answers and they're so much better than I am. This is so important because we tend to get into comparison when we get into these groups. We look at somebody and we say, wow, what are they doing? They're making more money than me. Or wow, what are they doing? They seem so much more more organized than I am. They really seem like they have it all together. But I will guarantee you, that every single person has their issues that they're working through, right? We're human. That's how it works here, people. We're all evolving. We're all in our own states and we all have our own wisdom inside. So you can step into a room and you might say, wow, this other person seems to know so much more than me. But then how much more do you know about another area of life that they just don't know. I see this come up with lawyers when they're thinking about their rates. And there's a bonus inside of Timepiece for Lawyers that addresses this too, like raising your rates, communicating your rates confidently. But 
One of the things that lawyers tend to do is discount themselves. They look at another lawyer and they say, wow, they're they're charging $325 an hour. And that just seems amazing. I'm only charging like $225 an hour. I, I, I can't charge $325 an hour. But then when I ask them questions around, well, that lawyer, what skills do they have that you don't have? And they they look at themselves and they say, well, I mean, I guess they've been practicing longer. Yeah, but okay, so what? They, maybe they're practicing longer, but what skills do they have? Well, actually, they say they don't practice law as well as I do. They seem like they don't they don't really care as much about their clients. And so then I can point a mirror at them and they can see, oh, wait a minute. I'm actually just as good as this other lawyer. I may not have the same years of experience, but I am amazing at what I do. And I really care about my people and I get them results, better results than the guy who's charging 325. And that helps them build the confidence to say, oh, I can raise my rates because I'm getting the results for my clients. And so I wanna offer to you that any container that you enter when you're making an investment in yourself, even you know your financial advisor, a coach, a group program, whatever it is you're doing, that you have wisdom inside of you, so much wisdom, and that when you access that wisdom and you recognize it, you are gonna build your confidence and you're gonna see that there's nobody who's better than you. We're all on this journey and each of us have our own skills and our own strategies that we bring to the table, but no one is better than anyone else, period. All right. So let's wrap this up. You've got nine skills. I want you to be able to apply them. Let's let's run through them real quick because this is important and you can apply this in any area of your life. So... The first skill, I'm like turning through my pages here. I didn't realize how much I wrote down here, but I wrote quite a bit. All right. So number one, when I invest in a coaching program or any investment, I know the skill and I I want to get, and I know the value of that skill for me. Two, I jump into the materials knowing that I'm not going to absorb everything all at once and I'm going to need to hear it multiple times and apply it multiple times over and over and over. (laughs) Number three, I ask for help even when I feel uncomfortable asking for help. Number four, I commit ahead of time to try what my coach is suggesting over and over and over again until I completely understand it and can make it my own. Number five, I evaluate every attempt at what I do so I can see exactly what I need to tweak to make the progress I want to see. Number six, I don't indulge in self-pity. Number seven, I surround myself with people who want the same thing as I do. Number eight, I have relentless pursuit of what I want and I take complete responsibility over my results. And number nine, I remember that there's no hierarchy and not to compare myself. So my friend, you have the keys inside of you for getting what you want, whatever result that you want. And I've given you some offerings here, some suggestions here so that you can take that to the next level, the next thing that you do. And if your desire is to have the life you want, to have the time that you want so that you can be more present in life, enjoy the finer things in life, go on vacations without bringing your laptop, leave the office in the middle of the day to get your nails done or whatever it is you want to do. I want to invite you to Timepiece for Lawyers right now. You can join me at dinacataldo.com forward slash timepiece, P-E-A-C-E. And we're going to take everything that you learned here today and we're going to apply it to you creating the life that you want and doing it by design intentionally. And I'm going to help you do that every step of the way. You can join me, dinacataldo.com forward slash timepiece, and you'll get everything you need. All right, my friend, I hope you have a fabulous rest of your day and I will talk to you next week. Bye.